Hey guys, welcome back to the Mickelson Racing Channel. In this video, we're gonna teach you how to insulate your garage for dirt cheap. Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna give you a couple basics on what you need to do electrically, what you need to do for insulation, how to tin your ceiling to put insulation on the ceiling, vapor barrier, and how to install a heater. And we're gonna do all that stuff while teaching you how to do it for dirt cheap, just like me. First thing you gotta do is you gotta lay out your electrical if it's not already laid out, like this one is not. So our code in uh, state of North Dakota is box every four feet. Can't go two feet without having a box. So we got our uh, electrical laid out uh, part of the way for how much is gonna be insulated today. So we got it up here over the garage door. We got the wire going around box there box there and that's uh all we're going to accomplish today for insulation so that's all we're going to lay out and remember always get this done by a licensed electrician you are allowed to do it yourself if you're the homeowner but i do not advise it make sure you are getting this done by a licensed electrician all right second step is well you know actually insulating um, there are more steps after the second step but second step is actually insulating so what you got to do is you got to measure how tall and how wide uh, your studs are. This particular garage is built 24 on center. I think that's pretty common for most garages. And we just gotta measure how high up we gotta go, roll out our insulation, cut it, and then lay it up in our uh, stud cavities. So that's what we're gonna do now. So you guys get to watch me work while you sit at home and relax and have a cold beverage. Pretty jealous. Hey, don't forget to like and subscribe so you can watch us build other cool things and work on other cars, like repairing this 460 horsepower Caprice.
Well, folks, as you can see, we got the one wall, the garage door wall done. And we also have the far wall done. The wall against the house is already insulated, so that's complete. We just have one wall left to go. 108 inches tall, 24 feet long. Whew, we're almost there, home stretch. Uh, we got all the electric done. Make sure you get that done by a licensed electrician. That is perfectly key to make sure everything's going to be good to go. But we got electric up to code every four feet, uh, as North Dakota code says. Well, boom, boom, boom. We got three above the workbench, and then every four feet go along the wall. And then we go around the garage door. We got one over here. Um, I will consider putting an air conditioner on this wall, uh, but we have to have one there anyway for code. So that's why we got one there. So we have way more electric. We had two outlets in here before, two receptacles, two duplex receptacles. Now we have, I don't know, 11, 12, something like that. Anyway. Way better for electricity. Two walls are insulated. Well, technically three because that one is already done. Just got the one left to go. We're gonna start on it now. It's been a pretty slow process for me. This is, you know, day like four or five. Uh, I just come out here for maybe an hour, hour and a half, two hours uh, after work, in between work and homework for college. So um, anyway, we're getting it done and uh, that's the key. So one more wall to go and insulation is complete. Well, folks, uh, we're going to skip ahead here. My girlfriend and I have just been knocking this out. Uh, I had to have her help for the ceiling, but here we go. I'll just show you right into it. We do have the vapor barrier up and all the way across the ceiling, draped over the walls so I can tie it into the, uh, to the walls. But here is where the real action happens is check out this tin. This tin we got from uh, two different sources from a buddy, um, my coworker, and uh, my boss. So we got the tin from two different sources. I believe it's two different brands because it doesn't quite match up perfectly uh, with, the, with the, the grooves that are cut in there and everything like that, how it's manufactured. But we're making it work. It looks pretty good. I'm not the best tin worker. Um, this is the first time I've actually ever laid tin, but um, yeah, it's good as you can see right up here. Oh, boom. We got a little discrepancy. Let's get the light out of the way. We got a little discrepancy there with the outlet and the cutting. And um, we kind of oil canned it up in here. It's got a little wave to it. But um, yeah, I don't know. It's not bad. I'm pretty proud of it. But anyway, just wanted to give you a little update because we just been knocking it out and kind of forgot to film the tinning. Uh, it's really been a difficult process and you really don't want to watch me tin anyway. One more sheet of tin up that'll get us almost to the wall and we got eight more inches get the light out of the way eight more inches after that piece of tin to the wall and uh, we'll have this finished up in the next couple hours i think so <sighs> all right carry on you watch me insulate my entire garage boy was that so much fun i can't wait to do it again but i have a warm place to work right now it is about 62 degrees in here on this cold 30 degree day and uh, it will maintain that uh throughout the winter time so i've got an electric heater up here and we've got that run into my welder plug i haven't run it yet uh, but i may decide to in the future uh, we'll have to work that out later i do have a nipco heater just to pump it up that thing pumps the heat up in this garage really quickly so i can go from cold to warm in a really in a hurry, uh, a couple minutes, five minutes, less than 10 minutes for sure. I can go from uh, 30 degrees to 60 degrees really quickly. Um, small, small space. We're running a 16 wide by 24 deep single car garage. Uh, it's a, it's an over single. It's larger than a single car. We've got a big fat car in here. This is my Caprice. It's 20 some feet long, 4,000 pounds, big car. And uh, it fits in here with room to work around it on both sides. I've got two engines in here, LS7, big block, 454, uh, supercharged Ecotech, 
Uh, we got shelving on both sides. You know, we got plenty of room to work in here, which is great. You guys watched me electrify the garage. Uh, we brought it up to code with some help of a licensed electrician. Uh, then we insulated the walls. And then we laid a vapor barrier down. Uh, I haven't finished my vapor barrier on that wall, but don't worry, I will. Um, we've got some stuff coming up, some events we have to prepare for. And so I had to stop working on the garage now that we got it good enough and start working on some cars in order to make our deadlines. So that's why I haven't finished that, but it will be. And then you guys watched me tin the ceiling, which, you know, was a lot of fun. First tin job, I didn't do the best. I have two mistakes. One mistake right there with my overlap and another mistake right there with my overlap for the outlet. I don't know if you'll be able to see that on camera, uh, but I do have a little mistake there too. Not bad. First time tinning. Uh, I'm impressed. I'm glad it's tinned. It looks cleaner. It's white tin, so it looks brighter in here and it's going to hold up the insulation that's in the attic really well. So happy about that. So we covered electrification. We covered insulation we covered vapor barrier we covered tin what else did we do we installed these sweet lights uh, my buddy mortsky repair if you guys haven't followed him on youtube give him a subscribe also shout out to puddin he's almost at a hundred thousand subscribers if you guys haven't watched puddin's fab shop on youtube go check him out cool dude great videos it's worth your time so we got these sweet uh four foot led sticks maybe they're eight foot Actually, these are 8-foot LED sticks from Mordsky Repair. Super bright. And then I've got corn lights uh, in that fixture and that fixture. And then we've got outlets up here for the, the LED sticks uh, that are switched power. So they turn on and off with the light switch. Awesome. Then we got power, you know, all over there. So that was a really fun time. This is the part you've all been waiting for. Let's go over how much this cost to do because it's dirt cheap and you guys can do it too what do you think of the garage you like it in here it's warm enough you're not cold mm -hmm. oh you miss me a little bit need some pets oh yeah having a good day aren't you he wants to be right by me but he can't get over here there he comes hey buddy hi oh hi what do you think of the garage? Did we do a good job? Should we tell the people how much it cost? It's not interested. Guess I'll have to do it. Let's go over how much we spent. So insulation was $210. Now that was wall insulation and uh, we have a little bit left over. You see we got uh, three rolls left over there uh, for the bats and then we got some, some scraps over there and some little bit of scrap over here too. But that was for wall insulation and then we blew in the ceiling. So that was $210, um, pretty minimal, pretty minimal stuff. Uh, vapor barrier, that was a lot. That was 160 bucks for this plastic that you see on the wall. We only used about 40% of the roll, if that. Uh, we got a lot left over, but that was a big hitter. 160 bucks for, uh, for the vapor barrier. Uh, electrical was $75 for materials. Uh, that included wire, uh, that included boxes and receptacles and covers. And let's see, that's about it. Yeah, that's about it for electrical. So that was 75 bucks. Material is not too bad and we didn't use a lot of it. Um, so yeah, that was pretty good. Uh, tin on the ceiling. Tin was free. Got free tin from Wardsky Repair, enough to do the ceiling and a little bit extra. Um, We'll be able to maybe do this wall um, if we choose to. I really don't want to tin anymore, but if we choose to, we'll be able to do that wall behind me and uh, we'll be able to use it for some other project because we've got some leftover tin. Uh, lumber. Lumber was free. We found that around the farm. We've got a house that's going to be burned down uh, on the farmstead here in a little while, and so we scavenged some lumber out of that. So lumber was free. Uh, labor. Labor was also free. Uh, I did most of the labor. My girlfriend also helped me out quite a bit. And uh, so that was huge. How much time do we have into this thing? We have about 40 hours between my time and my girlfriend's time. Uh, most of that time actually was spent pressure washing and cleaning the used tin that we got for free from Wardsky Repair. So that took a lot of time. I got probably about eight hours into 
uh, pressure washing and cleaning the tin. So that took a long time uh, and it wasn't the most fun. Last thing that cost money was our heater. That's right, our electric heater that we've got up here that we haven't even used yet. Uh, so I got heater and I've got an old dryer, no, an old range cord from an electric range that we replaced. I've got that salvaged uh, because we know that's good enough for our uh, 50 amp circuit we got plugged into. Um, it's the same. So anyway, we got an adapter uh, to go from a range to a welder because I already have a welder outlet right here for my welder. And I wanted to utilize that circuit because it's already here, the wire's already here, it's already in the box, it's the right amp rating, so I wanted to utilize that, so now we can. So anyway, those two items together were $75 on Amazon, brand spanking new, shipped to my door. So pretty inexpensive. I'm pretty pleased with that, actually. I had this same exact heater in my old house, which was a two-car garage, and it heated that to, I don't know, 70 degrees all winter long, I think I had it at, maybe 65. But uh, anyway, heater, it's going to work really well. Um, haven't decided if I'm going to use it yet because the NIPCO works even faster. Um, I haven't been keeping the garage at a maintained heat yet. Uh, I've just been letting it ride, and then when I work out here, I fire up the NIPCO. So the NIPCO, it'll heat this thing up from 30 degrees to 60 degrees in like five minutes. Less than 10 minutes for sure. So it, it works really quickly, and then the garage keeps heat for a pretty good amount of time, so I don't have to keep running all the time. And if I do want a little bit of constant heat that's quiet, I can always run the electric heater if I want to. Uh, we are looking into going to propane. Uh, we do have propane here at the house for the house furnace. And I could just put one of those up here, like a radiant heater or something like that. Or maybe a forced air. You know, we could do that too. So we're looking at going to propane. Uh, that may happen. It may not. I don't know. We'll, we'll, see what, uh, we'll see what those cost, really. Basically, that's, that's kind of the deal. But we're covered. So all in all, we did this for pretty freaking cheap. We did this whole garage for $520 plus 40 hours of our time. Not that bad. Now, the 40 hours wasn't over the course of a week. We didn't get this done in a week. It actually took maybe six weeks uh, working on it here and there. Hour here, hour there, eight hours here. Um, it, it took us a long time. Um, full-time college student, and I work full-time, and I try to run this YouTube channel. So my time is, uh, is, is low. Um, spare time is definitely low. And so I just worked on it here and there, but it took us six weeks, um, 40 hours of time total, and $520. Anybody can do this. Anybody can do this inexpensively if you choose to, and it's gonna make your life a lot better when it gets cold. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe right here in the corner of this video. It's really helping the channel out a lot. All the likes, all the comments, all the subscribes, it really helps us in the YouTube algorithm so more people just like you can watch videos just like this. All right, we'll see you next week on the Mickelson Racing Channel.